Can you hear regarding Simplify? It's January 17th, and we're going to take a look at the peppers we just uh, planted seeds about nine days ago. Do a little potting up, and we're going to plant a few more seeds. Here's those pepper seeds we planted, and it's been uh, nine days ago, maybe. Uh, Roughly, yes, nine days. And we're going to plant these up. We're going to go through the process of how we do this. Okay, I always talk about my seed start mix. Now, for, for a lot of you, you might just want to buy uh, the little seed starter in the bags at your big box store. But I, I mix my own when I'm starting uh, my seeds now and my seedlings. Uh, so I can make it stay together better. I'm using two parts uh, peat moss, one part fertilite and one part wood chip compost that I have uh, taken and, and sifted. Now when you do this, you want to pull out your little piece of wood that's, even when you buy good grape uh, peat moss, it's going to have wood pieces in it. Occasionally, I'll get a little wood piece that turns sideways and goes through, but uh, you can pick them out as you go or, or whichever. But anyway, you can see this mix is dry. Now, what I normally do is for a full container of this, I'll mix uh, half a, or a half a cup of calcium. I want to make sure I've got good calcium in there. Now, normally, with this cup full, I'll use two-thirds of a cup of, of chicken litter, fertilizer, pelletized chicken litter, and then I put a little azomite just for good measure in there. And then I see sticks, I just pull them out. But okay, we don't want to plant into something like this. Now, whether you're planting your seeds, you're planting potting up or whatever, we don't want to plant this uh, like this. We want to put water in it. Now, it depends on how dry your mix is to how much water you've got to put in there. We'll put some in, mix it around, make sure it gets absorbed because if you just pour it in, if you put this in dry and you pour it in there, a lot of times your uh, mixture will never get moistened. And I, I preach that a lot because I've had I've had from experience where I was using seed starter at the time, and because it wasn't pre moistened, it never did do good. The the plants that I put in it were uh, really poor growing when I potted them up. It finally the moisture mixture started them growing the roots towards the edge but other than that they were just kind of root down right in the, the middle they weren't going very far they weren't very healthy but anyway this this way you've got a fertilizer in there you you've got enough uh, calcium to kind of counteract the ph of the peat moss that's in here it's it's kind of acidic okay we got this done and we don't want any water squeezing out of it. We it's good if it forms up a ball. Now normally I do a full tray like this one here uh, whenever I do this, but for the sake of showing you, we're just going to I'm using a bigger trays. I'm not using the little bitty 72 uh, cell trays. And we just put some in here. And then I like to push it, pack it in there. Not real hard, but push it down so it's solid. And then I'll put some more on top and pack it down. Then then I smooth it out. And now this is this is the way I have it when I plant my seeds or whenever I pot up. But this this is the one. Now I don't use the these are normally 18 pack trays. Uh, I'd say 18 pack. 30, 36 uh, cell trays that these fit in, but I have to put them in a, I have to put the little tray. Normally this is what I'm talking about, 
the trays that these fit in uh, for transport trays and stuff, they are uh, smaller, and I normally have to put them on in another tray to, whenever I water, so the water don't go everywhere. So what I've found is when I put them in this one here, I can fit another dozen in the same area on my shelf. So, so that kind of helps out with that. But anyway, what we're going to do now is first we're going to uh, start potting up some of these plants. Now I got this highly specialized tool here that I use. Uh, it's popsicle stick with a notch in the bottom, and it works real good whenever you're pot potting up stuff. What I'm going to do, and this is this is an easy job to do. I'll just pick a variety, and now I know kind of how many plants I want. So I want 24 of these. If I don't end up with that many, it'll still be fine. But what we're going to do is, because we multi-sowed sowed these seeds, we're going to take these seeds out of here, and we're just going to let this soil come apart. Now, it's best if the soil is moistened, so you can do this, but and it's good if you've got it somewhere you can make a mess, too. But anyway, as these come apart, we just want to loosen this soil, and we're going to take these plants out. And we don't a lot of people say you need your uh, true leaves, not just cotyledon, but they do real good at this stage, which is where they've still got their cotyledon for their first leaves. So, so anyway, we're just going to take, continue to take these out of here. And if you planted extra seeds and you got a bunch of extra plants going, take your take your best plants. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this stick, we're going to make a hole here, and we're going to take this plant, and we kind of let the root go down in there, and then we're going to use this stick to push these down. Now, I had a question about my grow station and leggy plants. Now, you see how tall this plant is now? It's right down there it's leaves are close to the ground now this will not hurt this plant uh, putting it in like that but right now because you might have a little bit of legginess or stretch for the light uh, you can just push that extra down in there and there you go I, I kind of lightly put the dirt around I don't want to put it down heavy because when you water it won't let it uh, settle in it's not like planting uh, transplant out, but we're going to do, we're just going to continue to do this. This little V just works so well, you just be gentle, don't tear your roots off. And when I hold them, I hold them by the leaves, I don't hold them by the stem. If you crank the stem, they might recover, but if you pull a leaf on, they will pop, they will recover. So don't think that that uh you're gonna hurt them and i i kind of like thing like plants might have feelings if they do uh that might be like pulling your ear huh but anyway this this is the way we do this we're going to continue on planting these up uh if i think about something here while i'm doing this well we'll come back here in just a minute. One thing I want to mention when you're uh, potting up your plants is make sure you don't lay them out for very long once you expose the roots because the, the tender roots, uh, it doesn't take long for them to dry out. And so when, when you're doing your potting up process, uh, make sure you get them back in the ground. Uh, fairly quick now some plants when you caught up they might have a whole lot of roots so it might be hard to put them in there but uh, the but we're just we're going to continue to uh, plant the rest of these and we'll see if we can keep from 
pulling any more out the whole way as we go along. Now, once you get them planted, like I say, make sure you water them in good. Uh, you want it to settle all the dirt around it. Usually you'll see your plant move if it's like mine. You know, it's going to fill that extra space and, and settle in the plant. But make sure it's watered in real well. Another thing I want to say is for those that haven't grown with grow lights or, or that's not familiar uh, with them, I had a question the other day whether I had a problem with leggy plants with my grow lights, and I told the person no because I don't really have a problem. Now, if you start getting to work, and a lot of people, you know, they say put that light right up on them, but I find that's not necessary, but if, if I start having a problem, there's one thing that could cause a problem with your plants getting leggy with the grow light is you've got too much heat and not enough light for the amount of heat. And that usually causes them to stretch because they want to grow because of the heat, but there's too much light. So you've got a choice. Number one is uh, turn down the heat. Now, if it's in your house and your heat set at a, a certain place, then uh, you you don't want to be cold. So, so that might not be an option. But if you uh, like me, now I start mine inside, and it normally stays anywhere from the minimum of sixty-two, and it might get on up to. Uh, 78 in here and that temperature really needs more light now what I do with these uh, peppers they're germinated they'll do fine in the cold as long as they don't get down to freeze and they really slow down if they're stay down to 40 but I can put them out on my shop under my grow lights now if I find that they're still trying to get leggy all you have to do is change your timer for your grow lights and extend the time and a lot of growers that grow their own under the grow lights, when their seedlings are small to keep them from getting leggy, all they do is instead of timing it, they give them 24 hour light. I'm going to say it's probably a little harder on the plant, but it works well. I can't see any problem uh, with the ones that I do that way. Uh, they get greener because they've got a lot of light, they get any good roots, and they don't start uh, shooting up. Now, if you put heat on, uh, uh, heat mat under them, expect that to happen. Make sure that you have plenty of light. Okay, we got all the peppers planted up that we got ready right now. And those ones and these right here. So these will all be ready to go out in the shop and grow on. And these, all these right here haven't uh, germinated yet. So I'm going to give them just a little bit more time but if they don't, then I'll have to uh, get some more seed. And that's one reason why you want to start early, make sure you've got them. Now, when I put these out in the shop, it should stay plenty warm from, from now till uh, spring enough that it sh they shouldn't have any freeze. And uh, that cool temperature will, will make them grow uh, slow and strong. Now, if I feel like that I need to speed them up, all I got to do is turn on the heat mat and uh, give them a little longer daylight and go from there. But now we got all this done, let's see, we might need to plant some seeds. I was fixing to plant some more seeds, but I think I got enough growing right now. Now, this is our uh, red romaine. Of course, it doesn't look red when it's little. Uh, the romaine hadn't germinated one seed there, it did. It's some old seeds, might not do well. Let's look at the rest. And the rest of them are out here in the shop where it's cooler. We don't want to uh, cause them to grow too fast as far as and get leggy. But once it warms a little bit, we will move these to the greenhouse. Sometimes it gets a little cooler at night, but it acclimates them better to the the situation but we have we have some mixed lettuce down here that uh, hasn't all germinated yet and we have 
uh, just some black seed Simpson and some butter crunch lettuce. And then we've got some red cabbage over here. And we've got our deal. And then we've got several things here. We've got some eggplants, which these really needed to uh, be inside. They hadn't germinated yet, and I'll probably move them off this tray. I didn't realize that I would brought them out. We have some Savoy cabbage here, and then we have some broccoli. And right here we have Michihili. We have just a couple uh, filled, filled kraut cabbages and some more bok choy. But all these take cold weather real well. Uh, lettuce, is, it does real well even with uh, a lot of temperatures when they get below freezing. So that's one good crop that you can grow whenever it's cold. But anyway, I hope you found some value in this video. Give her a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe. Share this video and enjoy that gardening experience.